world came from. Man was under a wicked ruler, Satan. But what's God going to do? And God decided he's going to redeem man. Like I said, the angel was not qualified to do it. God himself couldn't do it because he's a spirit. And so he needed help. He needed man's cooperation. According to the Bible, he made a covenant with Abraham. Did you ever read it? Why did he make that covenant? So that he would have the opportunity to bless and to help. Praise the Lord. If he, he needs opportunity to become, to be influential on earth again. How is he going to influence the earth? God was seeing the sick and the dying and the hopeless and the afflicted and the poor. But he didn't make the world to be that way. He needed somebody who would obey him. Who would listen to his voice. He tried Noah. Noah was a righteous man. In the, on the face of the earth there was nobody as righteous as Noah. And God destroyed the whole world and saved Noah and his family. But before long, Noah himself misbehaved. And they didn't follow him wholeheartedly. And God kept looking for someone to strike a deal with until he got Abraham. Abraham had no son. Abraham was now an old man. And God said to Abraham, God was looking for somebody who will walk by faith, who will do whatever God asked him to do. Adam failed. Methuselah, the old man, you remember him? He failed too. Noah failed. Here is Papa A.B. Alright. So God makes a deal with Abraham. And says, Abraham, I want you to obey my voice. You will have a son. Abraham said, me? At my old age? God said, you will have a son. And you read the story. Yes. At his old age, he had a son. And named him Isaac. Then God said, now, I want to prove Abraham. If he will follow me. Abraham had made the first point. He got the first one. The first one was, God said, Abraham, get up from here and go to a place that I will show you. The man just packed his things. And listen, not just some little belongings. He was a rich man according to the Bible. He had 300 servants born in his house. You know what it is to take care of 300 servants? Not 30, 300. So, he got all his house together. And they, they said, uh, he called his wife and said, we're moving. To where? He said, I don't know. Are you crazy? And all them servants got their things together. Abraham said, we are going. To where, sir? He says, God knows. The Bible says Abraham moved, not knowing where he was going. But believing in God who called him. Hallelujah. Amen. That was the first one. The second one was, he believed that he would have a son when God convinced him that he would have a son. And he had the son. This was the third and last one. God said, Abraham! He said, Sir! God said, That's your only son, Isaac. Take him to a mountain, one of the mountains of Moriah, and offer him there for a bond sacrifice. You know what? Abraham, some people say that Abraham, goes, Oh! Have you watched the Bible? <laughs> that video thing. Abraham looked so miserable. No, no, no. According to the Bible, he didn't cry. He took his son and said, let's go. To where? To one of the mountains of Moriah. What are we going to do there? Oh, sacrifice for God. And the Bible says, Isaac followed him. He wasn't saying, let go of me. No, no, no. He, he followed him. Hallelujah. So they went there and they found a mountain. And he laid his boy down. And the boy said, Daddy, there's wood. For the fire. You got a knife. But where is the lamb? That little guy didn't know he was the lamb. <laughs> so where is the lamb? Abraham said, God will get himself a lamb. And he got the guy and put him on the woods. And took his knife. 
Listen, he wasn't testing God. The Bible says he followed God wholeheartedly. He took his knife and was ready to cut him. And God said, Abraham, Abraham, stop! Why did God stop him? I'll tell you. God could have let him kill the boy and he would raise him up. God didn't stop him because, ah, before it is too late to let me stop. No, 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 no. The reason God stopped him was because if he didn't stop him, human beings would begin to offer human sacrifices. And they would say that God told them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God, God let us stop there at that point. And said, Abraham, Abraham, stop. He said, don't offer the boy. Now I know that you trust me. And Abraham turned and there was a ram caught in the bush. And he went and took the ram and offered the ram for the sacrifice. And called the place Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, did you know that this was so touching to God? God was in a blood covenant with the man Abraham. Abraham would give his son to God. But God, what has he given to Abraham? He says, I will give you the earth. I will give you all things. But God knew there is nothing as valuable to a man as his son. Now, what do you want to give to the man? The man has given you his son. What are you giving? You are promising land and houses. No, sir. Not good enough. God, from that day, knew that he has to give his son to Abraham. Are you hearing me? But he still needed somebody to obey him. and Nobody would. The Bible says his right arm brought salvation. Hallelujah. His right arm brought salvation. Who is Jesus? I want to tell you this. Never think that Jesus Christ was at any time separate from the Father. For he was not. Who was Jesus? Who was he? And who is he? Because he's still alive. Amen. This Jesus that we talk about, we just read it. The word became flesh. That is where Jesus came from. There was no Jesus. But the word of the Father became flesh. Are you hearing me? You see, the word of God is so important. When God speaks his word, if God says, you are a tree, you would become a tree. He wouldn't need to do anything. You would just become a tree. If God says, you are blessed, you are blessed. Are you hearing me? He won't have to bring, he won't have to take some blessings and come and put them inside you. Are you hearing me? If it's a message of healing, it becomes healing. When it says, you are healed, you become healed. You are, listen, God speaks by names. Oh, I don't know what you're getting this now. Hear me. I said, God speaks by names. All the time he says, I am the Lord that heals. He introduces himself. I am Jehovah Nisi. He introduces himself. Anything he calls himself, he reveals his character through his names. So also, when God speaks to you, he speaks to, he speaks to you by giving you a name. When he says you are healed, it means you are the healed. As far as God is concerned, you cannot be the sick. You are the healed. Are you hearing me? If God says, be strong, you become strong. That's the way. You are the strong. Are you hearing me? What God says becomes. Hallelujah. Now, God sent an angel to tell a woman, Mary, that she would have a son and his name would be called Jesus. The woman believed are you hearing what I'm saying? The woman believed. 
when that woman believed, the message that God sent to her became what the message said. When God said to Sarah, you shall have a son, the word that God spoke to Sarah formed Isaac. Somebody hasn't heard that yet. Did you hear what I said? When God said to Sarah, you shall have a son, the word that God spoke to Sarah became Isaac. Did you catch that? Did you hear what I said? The Bible says that Isaac was born of promise. That means was born of the word. The word was the word of promise. Ishmael was born after the flesh. Sarah had no biological way of having a child. But the word could not be changed. The word that came into her body became Isaac. She could have not had a child. But the word said, you shall have a son. And her body responded to the word that God spoke. And Isaac was formed in her. When she was past the time of having any child. The importance of the word of God. So when God in the same way spoke to Mary and said as a virgin you shall have a son. He had spoken to a woman at old age. Who could not. Without, listen, who could not because she had passed the age to have children. Now he's going to speak to a young woman. Who has no meeting with a man. A virgin. For you to know that when he spoke to Sarah. It was his word that brought forth Isaac. Now he speaks. And says to Mary. You shall have a son. His name shall be called Jesus. The woman said. How can, I, how can these things be? Seeing I know not a man. The angel said. The Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words. The power of the highest shall come upon you. Because whenever God speaks, the Spirit of God goes on the Word. Hallelujah. That's the difference between what we say and what people say when they just read out the Bible. When you, as a child of God, who has the Holy Ghost, when you speak the Word of God, the Holy Ghost walks with the Word and causes it to work, to produce results. Amen? So, the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and overshadow you. Therefore, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Before long, she was pregnant. She had a child in her womb. She had no relationship with a man. She had a child in her womb. Her husband-to-be was amazed, Joseph. And said, what is this? And wanted to send her away secretly because he didn't want to embarrass her. But while he was thinking about these things, an angel came and said, Be not afraid. Because that which is inside that woman is from God. And he was shocked and said, All right, sir. And Jesus, listen, Jesus was born. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ is the result, the very result of the spoken word of God. Jesus Christ is the very offspring of God through his word. The life of God is in the word of God. Are you hearing me? The life of God is in the word of God. When you want to have oranges, you sow an orange seed. Is that okay? And you will have oranges. If you want to have some other crop, you sow their own seeds and they produce their own crop. Good. If you want to have a human child, you're also going to use what? A human seed. That is a human sperm. Now, the one for a dog will produce a dog. Is that correct? The one for a human being will produce a human being. Now, God... The way God reproduces is through his word. Because that is where his life is. All of man's life is in his blood. But all of God's life is in his word. Did you hear me? 
So, when Jesus was born of that woman, being conceived of God's Spirit and God's words, all of God's life, being in the Word of God that became human. When it says the Word became flesh, that means the Word became human. Are you hearing me? The life of that little baby did not come from the blood of a man. The life of that little baby. You know a woman doesn't give life to the child that is in her. Isn't that true? The blood of the child never comes from the woman. It comes from the man. How many of you know that's true? The life of a child does not come from the woman. Though the woman is pregnant with the baby. So when Jesus was born, he was born of a woman, but his life was never from the woman. His life was from the word of God. The word said, be healed, and the sick one was healed. The word said, let there be light. Where there was darkness, light came. The word said, let water be separated from the land. And suddenly, the water was separated from the land. The word also said to the woman, you will have a son. And suddenly, the baby took residence in her womb. That is the child that became Jesus. That's the reason the father was so pleased with Jesus. Where did Jesus come from? From the word of God. That's the reason he's the same with the father. Because the father's words and the father are one. In Israel they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They know that the father has a son. But that the son and the father have the same life. Because the son came from the father. Jesus was never a person separate from the father. Never. The first time there would be a Jesus was when he was born. Are you hearing me? So the father actually had a son. A son that he protected so much. A son that he took care of so much. A son whose life was not human. By way of coming from the first Adam. And yet was 100% human. The reason was so he would have rights on the earth. He came from a woman. But his life was from the word of God. He was not an angel. No. He was not one walking in the heavens along with the father at any time. For he was never away apart from the father. The angels never knew Jesus to be apart from the father. That's the reason why Jesus said, I and my father are one. Listen, when he said, I and my father are one, it's not the same, listen to me, it's not the same as two people sitting down to say, we are united. He's telling you he came, listen, he came from the very bosom of the father. Jesus is the very son of God in truth. Understand it. When we say he's the son of God, he is the son of God. He came from the word of God. He was born of the word of God. This is marvelous. Listen, it's so important. It's so important that you know this. So that when you start reading in the Bible that he was crucified, you know that that touched the heart of God. Because his son, whom he gave birth to through his word, was on that cross. I want you to know it. He said, I please my father always. This Jesus was marvelous. Everything he wanted to do was something that would please his father. He grew up learning to pray. Why did he pray? If he came from above, just like that. His life was from above. His body was here. Are you hearing me? When you are born again, you are from above. Because your life is from above. But you have physically never been above. Jesus physically had never been above. But his life came from the word of God. That's the reason why you can never separate Jesus from his father. It's impossible. Because the father's very words that he spoke out formed Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you see Jesus standing, like he told the disciples, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. 
He was not talking of a resemblance. No, he's not saying my hair is as long as the father's room. No, it's not a physical resemblance. It's not a physical thing. The very life of the father, the word, the revelation of of the father, tabernacled in human flesh. This is Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners had spoken to us by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He is the brightness of the Father's glory. He is the express image of the Father's person. You cannot see the Father. You want to know what God is like? You look at Jesus. He is the one from the Father. So when he healed the sick and cast out devils, he was doing all that in obedience to his Father. For then the crisis hour came to him that he must die. Like I told you, it was not a meeting in heaven. There was no meeting where they decided that out of the three of us, who will die? And then they say, okay, the son, you are the smallest. You go down there and die. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Hallelujah. Oh, study the Bible for yourself. It wasn't like that. And the father said to the son, you're going to the cross. You will die for these people. That's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, hear me, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Listen. Did the son know that the father will raise him up the knowledge was by faith as you can believe in him by faith Jesus had faith in the resurrection like you can have faith in the resurrection are you still there when he was going to the cross he only believed that his father would raise him up just like you believe He went in obedience. Read about him in the Garden of Gethsemane. While he was praying, the Bible says, sweat came out of his body as great drops of blood. And he prayed and said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Why? Not because he was afraid to die. For he was not afraid to die. What bothered Jesus there was not the physical death. For that was a matter of choice. What bothered him was spiritual death. Spiritual death is separation from God. What touched the hand of the master was that for the first time in his life, he was going to be separated from his father. He has always been one with the Father. Can you say amen? Amen. He always obeyed his Father. Did anything. He was always close to the Father. And you know there's faith in fellowship. As long as you're walking close to God, you have faith. And all the time he he was close to his Father. Check Jesus. Sometimes after he had ministered to people, he would go and pray. Sometimes he prayed all night long. Why was he praying? Why did he have to pray? He walked this earth like you and me. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? He walked this earth like you and me. But he was the son of God. 100% God, 100% man. Hallelujah. To the cross he went. He said, Father, If thou wilt, let this cup pass from me. Then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Why? It was the Father's will for him to be separated now. Because he was going to be made sin for us. All our sins would be laid on Jesus. Not Not only was he going to be having our sins laid upon him, he was going to be made sin. 
That is the worst of all. Not only was he a sin bearer, he became sin. Did you ever read in the Bible where Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also shall the Son of Man be lifted up? Did you know that the serpent was a type of the Son of God? Why serpent for the Son of God? Because he was made sin on that cross. Being made sin, he was typified with the serpents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this Jesus was crucified for us. While he was on that cross, the Bible tells us, he cried out, I thirst. The soldiers came. They said, he's thirsty. Bring vinegar. They brought it. With a sponge, they put it in his mouth. They really wanted to punish him. They hit him before they put him on the cross. They said, prophesy. Who touched you? Prophesy. You called yourself the son of God. When they took him to the high priest, a most touching event. He stood before the high priest. You would think the high priest was being honest. High priest said to him, I adjure you by God. Tell us, are you the son of God? The man said, yes. And the high priest said, you have all heard him. We don't need any more witnesses. This is blasphemy. But was he blaspheming? No. He was the son of God. He came unto his own. His own received him not. He was in the world. The world was made by him. This is the same one when God said, let there be light. The world that produced it. This is the same one when God spoke and called creation into being. This is the same word that was released from the mouth of the Father that formed Jesus, that became flesh. This is the very one that made the heavens and the earth. Tabernacle in human form. And now they ask him, are you the son of God? He says yes. And they say, crucify him for blasphemy. They put him on that cross. Nailed him to it. And suddenly, God laid our sins on him. The Bible says he was diseased with our diseases. In Isaiah chapter 52, he says his visage was so murdered, more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. There, Jesus turned. They were looking at him. Don't believe that thing they show you on video, and he's, he's doing like this there on the cross. No, 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 no. The Bible says that our sins and our sicknesses were laid on Jesus. When that happened, every sickness you could think about was on Jesus. According to the scriptures, while he was on the cross, his form began to change. They were looking at him. He was changing. What was he changing? Sicknesses and diseases and infirmities of every kind came upon his body. Until his very heart ruptured. His heart broke. The sack tore. All his bones were out of joint according to the scriptures. And he cried out. Father, why hast thou forsaken me? The father turned his back on the son because he was made sin. Who knew no sin? And the Father is so holy, He does not look at sin. He doesn't look at sin. He turned His back away from His Son. And the Son cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Then He said, it is finished. When He said it is finished, the Bible tells us there was an earthquake. Because the creator of the world was dying by the hands of men who knew nothing of what they were doing. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This man, brothers and sisters, he was the son of God. When the centurion that saw all these things looked up on the man who was crying so, 
He fell on his knees and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. That's the Roman centurion. He saw the rocks cracking. He saw the earthquake. The Bible says there was darkness in the whole earth for three hours. I don't have time to tell you about the temple now and all that happened there. But then, he gave up the ghost. They brought him down. His cold body. Jesus, the miracle worker. The one who raised people from the dead. The healer of their diseases. The one who stilled the storms. Who calmed the waves. Was dead. They carried his body. And buried him in the grave. Hallelujah. But when they buried him. Listen, when he died, the Holy Ghost left him. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 18, he is called a child of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? He's called a child of the Holy Ghost. Don't ever play down on the Holy Ghost. You know, some people say the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. It's not so. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're all one. Because we read it. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. That Word became the Son. He was not always a Son. For He was the Word of the Father. And took up form and became a Son. He was never a separate person until He was born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They buried him in a grave. The one, the only one who would obey his father was dead. But thanks be unto God. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are here. As soon as that was done, and his heart had ruptured and the blood had come out of his body. You remember, a soldier took a spear and thrust it through his side and blood and water gushed out. That was a proof that his heart had ruptured. In six hours, the man's heart ruptured. Think about it. What agony. But who was he doing it for? He didn't die for himself. Jesus was not a martyr. Are you hearing me? He didn't die for his beliefs. He was not a martyr. He was a sacrifice. Did you hear me? He said, this one thing I received from my father. He gave me power to lay my life down and he gave me power to take it up again. When he went into the grave, he was dead. He was dead. Because he bore our sins, when he died, he couldn't go to heaven. Why? He was made sin. And you cannot come to heaven if you're made sin. Where did he go? He became the prisoner. Listen, the holy Righteous son of God became the prisoner of Satan. They got a hold of him and took him into hell. Already on the other side of Hades, Abraham was there. Elisha was there. Joshua was there. Noah was there. All of these great men of old, they were all there because of righteousness. But they were there in Hades. On the other side of Hades, the wicked were there. But the righteous men were also on this other part of Hades. And they brought Jesus into hell. Abraham looked and there was the Son of Man whom his eyes had longed to see. But he had become a prisoner. David came and looked beyond the gulf and there was the Son of Man. Who was he? A prisoner. And he thought, sad. Sad. The only Redeemer had also come to hell as a prisoner. But back in heaven, God was counting the hours. <laughs> hours don't run. Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hours don't run in heaven. Hours run on earth. What's God looking at? 
He said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so also must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. God was looking at it. As soon as the righteous demands of justice were satisfied, all the angels heard the Father make the decree. All souls are saved. From where? He said, right from Adam to the last man that will be born. Salvation for everybody. Redemption for everybody. For every nation under heaven. And the angels were ready now. The word had been given. Jesus. His blood had been accepted. Suddenly, hell began to quake. Listen, let me tell you something. This is beautiful. I heard Kenneth Hagin's story. He said, I went to hell. He died and went to hell. Three times he went to hell. But he said, when he came out of his body on this occasion, when he went to hell, so he, came, he died as a young boy. And he came out of his body. He came out through his mouth. And because he was not born again, he, he began to descend. When he came out, his spirit came out and his body was still lying on the bed. So he descended through a tunnel. And he was going and going down, 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 dip. And it was dark, dark. He said, darkness is so dark. You would think if you had a knife, you could cut a chunk out of it. It was so dark. And he went down, down, down until he got to the gates of hell. And when he got to the gates of hell, there was this beastly looking thing, so dark and evil, that got a hold of him. And took him to lead him into hell. But as he was about to lead him in, he said, a voice spoke from far up above us. He said, I never understood the words that the boy said. He said, but he said something of some eight words together. But when he said those words, he said, the one that grabbed me took his hands off of me. He said, at the voice of the one who spoke from far above us, he said, at the sound of his voice, all hell shook. And this happened three times. Then he said, I didn't know who it was, but I believe it was Jesus. You see, he has a name. He's got power in heaven. He's got power in earth. He's got power in hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in hell, they haven't gotten the news yet. But when the father spoke and said, his blood is accepted. Suddenly, all of hell shook. And the Son of God, hearing that his blood had been accepted, he became a rebel in hell. Are you hearing me? This was going to be the first one that could stand against the devil in hell. Every other one that came into hell was taken in by Lucifer. But this time, there's one who said, take your hands off of me. Hallelujah. And as they grappled with Jesus, the Bible says, He threw up principalities. He threw up powers off of Him. Glory to God. His blood had been accepted. He engaged Lucifer in a combat. In hell. Brothers and sisters, as He threw them off, the Bible tells us, He made a public spectacle of them. What does that mean? He defeated them in that combat and then paraded them in hell. He put all of them in a queue and stood behind them and said, keep moving, keep moving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They saw it. Abraham looked and he saw it. Glory to God, Elisha saw it, David saw it, Solomon saw it, Joshua saw it. Jesus defeated Lucifer, the devil and all the cohorts of hell, and paraded them round hell until everyone in hell knew that Jesus was king. Hallelujah! Glory to God! And all the little demons in hell, they knew there's only one king. And it's Jesus. His name had power in hell. He had taken over. 
And he went to the gates and opened the stairs of the ancient departed saints and brought Abraham out and brought Noah out and brought all of them out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He brought them out. And an angel descended from heaven with the speed of lightning, the Bible says, and rolled a stone away. And the Son of Man came out victorious. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was delivered for our transgressions. He was raised for our justification. But when he came out of the grave, he came out the Lord High Priest. Suddenly, he was untouchable. He's going to present his blood. The sacrifice is accepted, but it's got to be presented on the mercy seat by the high priest. So now he's going. He's going. And all of these other saints went into the holy city according to the Bible. They appeared to many. Their graves opened and they came out of their graves. Think about it. Job came out. Old oh, Job. Do you remember what Job said? He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Glory to God. Yay. Job. With all of the wounds in his body. He said, and though after my flesh worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Woo. And now he had seen him. Glory to God. He had seen him. And they all came out of their graves. And Jesus was waiting in the garden. And Mary came, wanting to see the body of Jesus in the cave. And he wasn't there. And she looked around and there was a man she thought was a gardener. And she thought, oh, sir, where have you laid him? She turned around and looked back into the cave. And she heard a voice, Mary. And she turned to Jesus, ran to him, Jesus. And the master said, stop, Mary, don't touch me yet. Why? Because he's the Lord High Priest. He's going into the most holy place. Nobody touches the high priest when he's going there. (laughs) Hallelujah. He was on his way. Glory to God. Not only for Israel, but for the whole world. Oh, think about it. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. I couldn't go. I wasn't qualified, but someone was qualified for me. Who gave his life for me. I was lost. I was down and out. But somebody stood up and said, who are you? I said, boy, I'm a lost sinner. I'm dead and gone. He said, I'll pay for you. Glory to God. And he paid for me. Now he goes. Listen, he went to the cross for me. He died for me. They buried him for me. Think about it. I was supposed to be in that grave, but he was there for me. Then he went to hell for me. I don't have to go to hell anymore. He came out of hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I didn't know it. They didn't tell me. They didn't tell me. They didn't tell me. Till I found out when that man died. He didn't die for himself. When that man died, I was the one who was supposed to have died. I just found out in time, go with the God. And I endorsed it. Now, he has saints to the presence of the Lord for me. Do you mean he's going for me? Yes. If he stands in the presence of God, am I accepted? Suddenly, if, he, if he's accepted, you're accepted. Then he went and presented his blood before the Father. And it was accepted on the mercy seat. And the Father took Jesus and sat him on his throne. And said, I give you all that is mine. Hear me, hear me everyone. The Father gave to Jesus a new robe. Put it on him and proclaimed him king of kings and lord of lords he's back let me tell you something did you know they didn't know him in heaven they didn't know him in heaven because when he came out of the grave he was born again he was a new creation according to the bible he says thou art my son this day have i begotten thee In the book of John, he was called the only begotten of the Father. In the New Testament, in the epistles, he is called the first begotten of the Father. Because until he was born again, he was the only begotten of the Father. But when he was born again, he became the first among so many. Glory to God! Woo! Hallelujah! 
He is no longer called the only begotten of the Father. Read it in your Bible. Apart from in the book of John, you never see him referred to as the only begotten of the Father anymore. From after his resurrection, he is called the first begotten of the dead. The first begotten, hallelujah. He is the first begotten of the new creation. He is the first among us. Can you say amen? amen. Now the Bible says he is not ashamed to call us brethren. We are his brothers and sisters. Can you say amen? amen. Now he has a throne. And the father says, here you are king of kings and lord of lords. Oh, the son stands up and says, father. I got many that have died for down there. I have to go back to them. The father says, very well. They are in Galilee. They are waiting down there. Suddenly the Bible says, then came Jesus in the midst of the disciples. He didn't pass the door. He didn't pass the windows. But he got a body. They thought he was a ghost. He said, touch me. A, a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see me have. They touched him. He ate with them. But yet he walked through the wall. What manner of man is this? Hallelujah. He said, as my father had sent me, even so send I you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And lo, I'm with you always. Even unto the end of the age. Oh, great news. Could I tell the whole world he's come back? Could I tell the whole world he's back from the dead? Could I tell the whole world? Yes, I want to tell the whole world. He's savior of my soul. Glory to God. Heal of our diseases. No wonder Paul said Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. If he healed the sick back then in the Bible, he still heals them today. Can you say amen? amen. He is the one that the Father has honored. He has been given a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things under the earth. That every tongue should confess Jesus Christ. Glory to God, to the glory of God the Father. Can you say amen? amen. Can you shout amen? amen? Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are not following a defeated Christ. You are not following a Christ that is running away. You are not following a Christ that is looking for where to escape. You are not following a lamb. The Bible says he was offered as a lamb, but he's raised the lion of the tribe of Judah. Can you say amen? amen. Now you believe in him. Hear me. You have been justified from all your sins. He has declared you righteous. The Bible says, being therefore, Romans chapter 5 verse 1, being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him we have access by faith. Through Him. And the Bible tells us, giving thanks unto the Father, who hath qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the domain and the power of darkness. And translated us, in other words, transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we are in the kingdom of his dear son. He says, ye are come unto Mount Zion. Do you understand? We are now in the presence of God. St. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, of his fullness have we all received. And grace for grace. We have received of his fullness. Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 20, 26.